The Crazy Don, The Odd Father. Vincent Chin Giganti was the head of the Genovese organized crime family for years, but how much of his life was an act? Vincent Giganti was born in New York in 1928, one of five boys whose parents immigrated from Naples, Italy in 1921. His father was a watchmaker and his mother worked as a seamstress, but organized crime permeated the Manhattan neighborhood where his family lived. Giganti got a start in organized crime as a teen protege to Vito Genovese, a leader of the Genovese crime family from the 1930s to the 1960s. He mostly worked as an enforcer and chauffeur in the early days. It was also during his younger years that he got his first nickname. Some stories say that Giganti got his nickname Chin during his early years when he was a boxer because he had a glass jaw. But National Crime Syndicate reports that the name was a derivative of his given name, which would be spelled in Italian as Vincenzo, and his mother shortened it to Chin. Giganti managed to dodge convictions or only serve short stints in prison, all while moving up the crime family ladder. In 1957, he made his big move when he tried to shoot and kill mob boss Frank Costello, but only grazed Costello's head. Costello refused to name Giganti as his shooter, and Giganti got more street cred. Giganti ended up serving five years in prison after a 1959 narcotics conspiracy charge stuck, according to the New York Times. Chin's star kept rising throughout the 1970s, and in 1981, Giganti was named head of the Genovese family when then-boss Philip Lombardo retired while serving a prison sentence. In the midst of all this, Giganti also had a wife, a mistress, and eight children between them. With plenty of money to go around, Giganti included some of his family in his business affairs. According to a 1989 article by The Village Voice, Giganti's younger brother, a prominent Bronx priest named Louis Giganti, was hailed for spearheading a housing project which built or renovated thousands of low-income homes. The problem? It was all pretty much a cash funnel to the mafia, according to a Village Voice report. Companies owned by the Genovese crime family took all the building contracts and profited to the tune of $50 million. As the FBI's investigation into Genovese family operations continued, information about a corrupt construction scheme was coming to light. For his part, Fowler Lewis denied being involved in organized crime in any way and denied the Mafia even existed, saying it was an Italian stereotype, according to the Village Voice. This was all going down in the mid to late 1980s when Giganti was becoming more powerful in the world of organized crime as a Genovese family boss. Simultaneously, his behavior was getting weirder. Vincent Giganti managed to serve a relatively minuscule amount of prison time for all the things he was accused of, which included drug trafficking, loan sharking, attempted murder, conspiracies, and extortion. But Giganti wasn't just another mob stereotype. He was willing to go all out in his effort to thwart culpability as the leader of a crime family. His modus operandi was to feign mental illness publicly by doing things like walking around Greenwich Village in pajamas and a bathrobe, muttering to himself. Some people believe the act was all part of a grand scheme, while those on Giganti's side insisted his behavior was proof there was no way Chin could be running a multi-million dollar crime organization. He would do things like speak with the parking meters, uh, urinate in public. Yet John S. Pritchard III, a former FBI supervisor who led a squad that investigated the Genovese family in the 1980s, told the New York Times, he was probably the most clever organized crime figure I've ever seen. In July 1997, Giganti was found guilty of racketeering charges and given a 12-year prison sentence. A few years into his sentence, three more years were added on, which made him eligible for parole around 2012, but the crafty crime boss would never be free again. At his 1997 trial, Judge Jack B. Weinstein of the Federal District Court in Brooklyn sentenced Giganti to less than half of the time he was eligible to receive for the racketeering crimes he was convicted of. He was acquitted of three gangland slayings, per the New York Times. The jury was deadlocked on whether he ordered four other murders. The Times described Giganti as gaunt and staring into space as he sat in a wheelchair. Judge Weinstein said of Giganti, he is a shadow of his former self, an old man finally brought to bay in his declining years after decades of vicious criminal tyranny. Maybe Vincent Giganti was kind of a weird guy who also was really good at running a large crime family as the second nickname the Odd Father insinuates. But the courts don't take eccentricities into account when deciding if a person can be held accountable for crimes. They're looking for mental competency or lack thereof. So what if detectives once found Chin hiding in the shower, naked, under an umbrella with the water on? Allegedly, he plotted crimes and carried them out, or rather had others carry them out. The FBI was out to prove it. Oh man, it's crazy. Walk around that room talking to himself. Crazy like a fox. In 2003, however, while serving his 12-year racketeering sentence, Giganti admitted that the whole thing had been an act. He told the judge during a plea bargain that he faked mental illness while being examined by doctors throughout the 1990s to avoid prosecution, according to the Baltimore Sun. Entering federal prison at age 69 and completing the initial 12-year term was tenuous at best, and with the extra three years tacked on, he wasn't likely to get out until he was 84 years old. Even worse, Giganti had breathing problems and was known to faint while in prison. He died on December 19, 2005.